There's a quiet understanding When we're gathered in the Spirit It's a promise that He gives us When we gather in His name There's a love we feel in Jesus There's a manner that He feeds us It's a promise that He gives us When we gather in His name Every week on the BBC News Channel there's a programme called Click. It's supposed to keep us in touch with the world of technology and all the developments. Well, there's, there's quite a lot of jargon and there are people being very passionate about what they've developed and how they hope it will revolutionise certain aspects of our living or a particular process. They talk about artificial intelligence and how it will change the future of medicine and commerce, industry and production. They use terms such as big data and discuss how large social media platforms gather it and use it to inform the world of commerce and selling. And of course, in these days, the health service uses a lot of big data to predict what might happen. When we use our Nectar card at Sainsbury's, our Club card at Tesco or Morrison's more loyalty scheme, the goods we buy are monitored, the data collected, so that they can suggest what offers we might like to receive. It can be used to organise adverts we see on Google for one product or another. And we've moved from the world of analogue to the world where televisions were, were cathode ray tubes to a digital world with slimline TV. And all that brings, like TV channels, that are available in their thousands, if you take all the packages out there. Radios where the hiss of the broadcast is no longer present. But technology is using its digital base to move in a world of virtual reality, where we explore new ways of doing things. A virtual world, computer generated, simulating a 3 d dimensional image of our world, or indeed an imaginary world. A world with which we can interact or, or use special equipment, like a helmet or a visor or a gaming control, or a special pair of glasses for that matter. Computer-linked tools so that when we put it on, the visor can tell us new things, enable us to look beyond ourselves. New worlds can be created through the imagination. Doctors no longer need to hone their skills on patients needing surgery, hoping in the meantime they don't kill them. Many years ago, when I was about 17, I remember one of my brothers, uh, who became a doctor, tried to shock me by taking me through the anatomy room at the university he was attending. There were all the specimens under sheets, with the name tag of each student was responsible for that particular dissection on the toe. Students can now learn anatomy in virtual world. It's all very clever. I don't really understand it or how it's done. But it is done. And people spend hours in the virtual world, a world that is created for them by a computer. I wonder where the world of faith fits into that world, and whether there has always been an element of human living that is about a virtual world, a world of inner being that is entered into through our thinking and our experiences of God. It's not computer generated, but it hovers at the edges of our perception and our understanding. Jesus found a world of inner being with God, his Father, and a world of interaction with people. He lived with the tensions of both. In the world of people, there were differences as well. 
differences between Jew and Gentile, differences between man and women and how they were treated, differences between slave and free, difference between Roman and Greek, Jew, and so it went on. A world full of differences. Differences between those who believed that God could only be accessed through patterns of faith that had been long established in the tradition of the Jews. Jesus challenged them by his very being. He challenged them in a way he dealt with people and was more concerned with the world of their inner being than he was about the regulations that surrounded it and how it might be achieved according to priests or Pharisees, Sadducees and the religious tradition. Their world was based on the notion of authority that came through the Torah set out in the first five books of the Bible, known as the Pentateuch. It was a world full of hierarchies, where people built citadels of faith according to the rules and regulations which Jesus inevitably offended against, and at times upended. They challenged Jesus about the nature of his authority, where it came from, who had given it to him. When John the Baptist was alive, they challenged him as well, but his life was cut short on the whims of Herod's wife. John came preparing the way, declaring a gospel of repentance. He made no exceptions. All needed to repent, including those who built their lives on the tradition. Jesus recognised what John was trying to do and received from John a blessing and a baptism, even though John was uncomfortable about doing it. It set Jesus on the path to exploring how to bring all who would listen to a new reality, to a way of being with the living God. This is my son, said God about Jesus. Yet in his world, as in ours, it was more than just a statement of religious piety. It was, an ens it was an encounter with people, real people. People whose lives were caught up in a mess, caught up with anguish, caught up with illness, either their own or other people's. People who were poor, people who were prosperous, people who were rich, people of every type. People who could laugh and cry. There was nothing virtual there. The tears and the laughter were real responses to who they were and what they faced. He knew. He met. He ministered. He healed. He loved. Welcome to the liberated world of Jesus, where the compassion and grace of God is more important than the system, more important than the tradition, more important than the I beam as they say where I live. Welcome to Jesus. Come to him and share with him so that he can help you discover and explore the love that he has for you and for all of us who are struggling at times to hold on to the reality of faith in our virtual world, which is so often around us. And so a prayer. Father God, in the shifting sands of our world, and indeed the shifting sands sometimes of our faith, grant us an understanding of your reality for all, of your reality in our world, of your reality with us so that as we operate at times on the margins, on the very edges of our faith, we may know that you are with us, that you love us, that we may know that we worship the living God and his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
There's a quiet understanding When we're gathered in the Spirit It's a promise that He gives us When we gather in His name There's a love we feel in Jesus There's a manner that He feeds us it's a promise that He gives us When we gather in His name And we know when we're together Sharing love and understanding That our brothers and our sisters Feel the oneness that He brings Thank you, thank you, thank you Jesus For the way you love and feed us For the many ways you lead us Thank you, thank you Lord And we know when we're together Sharing love and understanding That our brothers and our sisters Feel the oneness that He brings Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus For the way you love and feed us For the many ways you lead us Thank you, thank you Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord.